in 1978, Warwick Castle became a member of the Treasure Houses of England, a heritage consortium founded by ten of the foremost privately owned stately homes in England, with the aim of marketing and promoting themselves as tourist venues. Later in 1978, Warwick Castle was sold to Tussauds, a large visitor attraction operator. Tussauds performed extensive restorations costing £25 million to the castle and grounds, in addition to opening its gates to the public. In 2001, Warwick Castle was named one of Britain's top ten historic houses and monuments by the British Tourist Authority. That list included the Tower of London, Stonehenge and Edinburgh Castle. Warwick was recognised as Britain's best castle by the Good Britain Guide. An Anglo-Saxon burr was established on the site of the future Warwick Castle in 914. Legend has it that the construction of the fortifications was instigated by Ethelfeda, daughter of Alfred the Great. After the Norman conquest of England, William the Conqueror established a Mott and Bailey castle in Warwick in 1068 to maintain control of the Midlands as he advanced northwards. A Mott and Bailey castle consists of a mound on which usually stands a keep or tower and a bailey which is an enclosed courtyard. From 1088 the castle traditionally belonged to the Earl of Warwick and it served as a symbol of his power. The castle was taken in 1153 by Henry de Anjou, later Henry II when the Earl of Warwick's wife was tricked into handing over the castle. Warwick Castle has been compared with Windsor Castle in terms of scale, cost and status. The current castle, built in stone during the reign of King Henry II, is on the same site as the earlier Norman Mott and Bailey Castle. The two entrances to the castle are in the north and west walls. In the centre of the northwest wall is a gateway with the Clarence Tower, named after King Richard's brother, Duke of Clarence, and Bears Tower, where it is thought bears were housed that were used for baiting. The residential buildings line the eastern side of the castle facing the River Avon. These buildings include the Great Hall, the library, bedrooms and the chapel. Under Thomas de Beauchamp, the castle's defences were significantly enhanced in 1330 to 1360 on the northeastern side by the addition of a gatehouse, a barbican, a form of fortified gateway, and a tower on either side of the reconstructed wall, named Caesar's Tower and Guy's Tower. The gatehouse has been described as the quintessence of the twin-towered design, featuring murder holes, two drawbridges, a gate and portcullises, great gates made from wood and metal. The Barbican at Warwick is considered to be a fine example of such castle defences. The reconstruction of the gatehouse and the east façade was funded by the spoils of the Battle of Poitiers. However, the eastern façade overlooking the river was designed as a symbol of the power and wealth of the Beauchamp Earls and would have been of minimal defensive value. The presence of windows in the east façade is a rarity amongst castles, as it weakens the structure, permissible at Warwick Castle because the River Avon and the cliff provide a natural and almost insurmountable defence. 
to view the spectacular walls and towers of Warwick. No fewer than 574 steps need to be climbed and descended. The walkways that run along the curtain walls meant that crossbowmen and archers could move swiftly to quell any danger at any point on the perimeter. Once in position, they could pick off the enemy from the battlements. These consisted of solid sections of wall called merlons and gaps, known as embrasures. Towers were the mainstay of a castle's defensive system. Because they projected above and out from the wall, they gave archers a clear view downwards and sideways. Guy's Tower was built in the 14th century. It's 12-sided, stands 39 meters high and has five stories. It is also a refuge for those none too keen on heights, with thoughts of I should have done this when I was younger. However, for those who did look over the edge, the views were reward enough. Built on the orders of Thomas de Beauchamp, Caesar's Tower is a masterpiece of 14th century military architecture. It has an irregular quatrefoil or cloverleaf shape and rises 44.8 meters from the solid rock just above the river level. It has three stories. These are topped by a platform with the crenellated a machicolated parapet. Entering the great house, the first pleasant surprise was the lack of any photography prohibited and videos banned signs. As the castle is run by the same organization as Madame Tussauds, visitors are encouraged to even interact with some of the exhibits and if you want to take a photo, so be it. In 1898, Daisy, Countess of Warwick, hosted a weekend party at which the principal guest was the Prince of Wales, later Edward VII. Once inside the former private apartments, you step back to a time of the most lavish and extravagant parties at Warwick Castle. You meet the beautiful Daisy, Countess of Warwick and her friends, preparing for their weekend party. The royal weekend party brings to life the secrets of a Victorian household and all its important guests. Encountering a young Winston Churchill and listen to Clara Butt, renowned singer of the time, and Paolo Tosti, music master to the royal family. Most of the furnishings and fittings are those that were actually here in 1898 and photographs taken at the time mean that it has been possible to put every chair, table, bed and book in exactly the place it occupied over 100 years ago. A water-powered mill in the castle grounds was probably built under Henry de Bruford, 1st Earl of Warwick. By 1398 the mill had been relocated to just outside the eastern castle walls on the west bank of the River Avon. Both mills were subject to flooding. By 1644 an engine house had been added to the mill. The mill was reused as an electricity generating plant after it had stopped being used to grind. But once Warwick Castle was fitted with mains electricity in 1940, the mill was no longer required and was dismantled in 1954. Formal gardens belonging to Warwick Castle were first recorded in 1534. Landscaping in the 17th century added spiral paths to the castle motte 
during Falk Greville's program of restoration. Francis Greville commissioned Lancelot Capability Brown to re-landscape the castle grounds. He began working on the grounds and park in 1749 and had completed his work by 1757, having spent about £2,293, around £250,000 today, on the project. The gardens covered 280 hectares. Robert Marnock created formal gardens in the castle's grounds in 1868-1869. In June 2005, Warwick Castle became home to one of the world's largest working siege engines. The trebuchet is 18 meters tall, made from over 300 pieces of oak and weighs 22 metric tons. The machine, which was made in Wiltshire, takes eight men half an hour to load and fire. It is designed to be capable of hurling projectiles distances of up to 300 meters and as high as 25 meters and can fire up to 150 kilograms of ammunition at a time. On the 21st of August 2006, the trebuchet claimed the record as the most powerful catapult in the world when it sent a projectile weighing 13 kilograms, a distance of 249 meters at a speed of 260 kilometers an hour, beating the previous record of 228 meters held by the Dutch. Two men dressed head to toe in medieval armor, armed to the teeth and charging towards each other on horseback. Warwick Castle was one of only five places given permission by Richard the Lionheart to hold jousts. And, as if that wasn't enough, there's also displays of archery from the Warwick Bowmen, the stunning Flight of the Eagles show, and a whole castle full of fun to discover afterwards.